Hey folks, as promised, I put together a build video for the walk-along glider. Feel free to pause as necessary, keep up if you need to, and enjoy. Good luck. Step one of the build begins with an 8.5 by 11 sheet. You can use regular printer paper, you'll end up with a much faster glider. You can use uh, standard notebook paper, which also works well, a little bit lighter. My favorite though is a, a piece of regular tissue. This is gray tissue from McGill Loves Kit. You can You'll need to cut that to size. If possible, iron it flat. Uh, don't use steam, just get it as flat as possible. That will help. Step two is where the project really departs from being a normal paper airplane. What you want to do is create a center line down the part. So you'll fold it in half the long way. We'll end up with a high aspect ratio piece. Now remember, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do because it's tissue, but generally it creases extremely nicely once you get it to behave. This is a nice fresh sheet of tissue. If it's crumbled, it's a little bit of a booger to work with. Fold it in half lengthwise, unfold it, then take a straight edge and razor, and slice it in half lengthwise. That will give you two distinct pieces, and then we're going to do the same process to both sides two separate pieces. Fold it in half again, lengthwise. You could turn it sideways because it's easier to manage this way. Again, lengthwise, edge to edge. Get a nice sharp crease. Tissue paper really creases well, which is beautiful laid out flat. Now, you'll have a center line here. You want to fold the top edge. This will become your leading edge. You're going to take your top edge, fold it up to the center line, get a nice sharp crease. Take this second, this, this new edge, which was just creased, take that back to the center line again, so you double it over. It's now about four layers thick. And finally, fold it over on the original center line. This is your wing plan form. All right? So I'll walk you through it one more time. Fold it in half lengthwise. That gets your center line. Fold the top edge to the center line, <clears throat> fold your crease leading edge to the center line one more time, fold it over on the center line. All right, then you're gonna repeat that for both sides. Moving right along, I repeated that for the second side. This is where you're going to lift it up against this flap. You're going to apply a bead of glue along here. Uh, you can use white glue, craft glue, whatever glue you prefer. Haven't tried super glue. It might work. I don't know. Um, epoxy is probably heavy. Uh, stick glue is preferred. Just if you have one, use a, a glue stick, lay a bead of glue along here, then fold it over, seal it up tight. Only do this for one side. The second side, you're going to slather glue along the, the leading edge and then approximately one inch inboard. So you're going to take this section here, and get that covered in glue. Uh, it doesn't take a lot because again, it's tissue paper. Anything you do adds weight. Then you're going to take the second section, lay it in place. Again, I haven't done the, the bead of glue, um, but you'll get the idea. You're gonna lay it down like this so it gets stuck down here. Then you're gonna fold the second piece over the top and that will glue the two pieces together. You're gonna let the glue dry and then check back. Admittedly, I misplaced my glue stick, so I'm gonna use some white glue. I'm just putting it on my fingertip just to make it quick. <clears throat> 
notice again, this piece, it's incredibly floppy at first. I'll show you how to reinforce it. It'll be a piece of cake. Just about an inch of overlap. Be sure you get the leading edge straight. I've tried swept forward, swept aft wings. Really doesn't help. You want a very straight wing. I'll show you how to adjust it. And then fold it over here. Just like that. You're going to want to let the glue dry and then come back. So check this out. You ended up with a glider of almost a 10 to 1 aspect ratio. It's going to be very flimsy. Here's the trick. What you want to do is you've got this leading edge piece that's folded over. Right now it's five layers thick. What you're going to do is kind of grip it in your fingers and fold it over. Just put about a 90 degree crease in it. You want to crease it all the way down its length. Just put a little ridge on there. Let it kind of relax a bit. I mean, it's about 45 degrees. There's fudge factor. You'll get used to it as you build more of these. It's very easy to do. Next, it won't be stable on its own, so we're going to create fins. I'm just going to approximate inch, about inch and a half, inch and a quarter from the edge. Good, turn it right side up. We've been building it upside down. About an inch, inch and a quarter. Get it back in frame. And just fold it up 90 degrees. So come down, make the crease, and then back up. That's one side. Come down, make a crease, come back up 90 degrees. So there you have it. Finally, the final step, take the end about 3 eighths or a half inch. <clears throat> it's approximate. Just put a crease along it here. As you can see, just bend it up a bit. Approximate. Um, this is what sets the, the incidence. Now this is a little bit too much. It'll be 30 to 45 degrees. Again, approximate. Don't worry about it. Once the glue dries, it's ready to fly. This glue is still a little bit wet because I used white glue instead of a glue stick. Oh well, you use what you have. In regards to trimming the glider, it's very much like the Gossamer Condor, the first human-powered aircraft that was successful. It won the Kramer Prize. What Paul McCready and his team found is that they could not treat it like a traditional aircraft. It was flying so slowly that if they were to create a, an aileron input, so if they raised the right aileron, lowered the left aileron, what would happen is the aircraft would actually turn left. What Paul McCready realized is they couldn't fly it like a regular airplane. They had to trim it using drag. This is the exact same principle. So what you're going to do, <clears throat> if the glider flies and it begins to go into a, a right-hand turn, what you're going to do is come over to the left fin, take the corner, and just crease it over 90 degrees, leave a tab out. <clears throat> this little tab sticks out, grabs the air, and it's enough to straighten it out or pull it into a left turn. If it starts turning left too hard, then you can decrease the size of the tab or add a little bit more tab on the right side. That's all there is to it. I'll show you a video of how to launch the glider. It's a, a little bit tricky um, because it's so light. It doesn't have inherent structure. It has to have some forward speed. I won't have very good flight video because this is in my apartment. It's fairly small. I'll do my best. I'll show you. Apologize for the poor audio quality. My phone is, in fact, taped to the wall. So I got the glider here. The way you launch it, it's, it's unusual. It's kind of cool. So I can't hold it up straight. It just, it falls. So what you do, you're going to hold it by one edge. You're going to kind of lift it up as you push it forward. And you're just going to let it fly out of your hand. It's going to go fairly slowly, but it's doable. So you're going to lift it up, push it forward, and let it go. One more time. So hold it by the edge, lift it up kind of over an arc so that you get it level and you do that as you're pushing it forward. There it goes. That's all there is to it. 
Now, what's, what may happen, sometimes it'll fly, it'll kind of bounce along. That's normal. That's just vortex shedding off the trailing edge of the wing. That's entirely acceptable. It's actually best if it does that. Uh, when you have a, when you're doing it as a walk-along glider, the slower you can get it go, get it to go, the more manageable it becomes. So when you have the board and you're flying, the way you steer the glider, you can shift it side to side, and that will side to side under the glider. That will create one more more lift on one side or the other. That will get it into a turn, or you can tilt the board. That has the same effect. And what you want to do is you want to Tilt the board, I find works best. Tilt the board and kind of push it forward ever so slightly. That's going to get the wing to come up and it's going to yaw forward slightly. And as you do that, you'll go into a turn. It will take some work. Now it's dynamically unstable. It'll get into a turn. It's gonna continue farther off. So you're gonna to have to shift the board underneath it a little bit, get more lift on the inside wing. It's technique. That's the fun of learning a walk-along glider. So once you do that, what you will find is if you have the the glider will fly kind of at the level of the top of the board a little bit ahead if you get the board more underneath it you're going to gain altitude very quickly it'll fly more slowly if you get the glider down <clears throat> excuse me down low in front of the board it's going to go faster if you get it too low it's just going to grab and it's going to snap over try not to walk on the glider it's expendable though so again You'll want to keep the board almost upright, maybe lean back 75 degrees from horizontal, and let it ride three to four inches ahead, and it'll just walk along, follow it. That's why they call it a walk-along glider. So there you have it. That's all there is to building a walk-along glider. I hope you have as much fun as I did. Enjoy. God bless. If I put it kind of lower on the board, in front I can get it going faster. Kind of like this. See it down on the accelerator. Or I can put it above the board and slow down a little bit. Push the board up.